Section 1. Listening Comprehension In this section of the test, you will have an opportunity to demonstrate your ability to understand conversations and talks in English. There are three parts to this section, with special directions for each part. Answer all the questions on the basis of what is stated or implied by the speakers in this test. Do not take notes or write in your test book at any time. Do not turn the pages until you are told to do so. Part A. Directions. In Part A, you will hear short conversations between two people. After each conversation, you will hear a question about the conversation. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording, you hear, I don't like this painting very much. Neither do I. What does the man mean? In your test book, you read, A. He does not like the painting either. B. He does not know how to paint. C. He does not have any paintings. D. He does not know what to do. You learn from the conversation that neither the man nor the woman likes the painting. The best answer to the question, what does the man mean, is A. He does not like the painting either. Therefore, the correct choice is A. Go on to the next page. Now we will begin Part A with the first conversation. Number 1. No, no. I asked you to get me the economics test book, not the textbook. Oh, no wonder the cashier looked at me that way. What can be inferred about the man? Number 2. It's almost noon. Are you about ready to head over to the cafeteria for lunch? I can't. I'm expecting an important call from my doctor, so I need to stay by the phone. What does the woman mean? Number 3. I can't find my wallet, and it has more than a hundred dollars in it. Calm down a minute. Have you checked the coat you had on this morning? What does the woman suggest the man do? Number 4. I waited for you at the library for more than 30 minutes yesterday. Weren't we supposed to meet at noon? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I've been so wrapped up in my science project, it just slipped my mind. What does the man mean? Number 5. This is the most boring dormitory party I've ever been to. It certainly could use some livening up. What does the man imply? Number 6. I've got three exams tomorrow. I can't possibly study for all of them. I'm just glad I'm not in your shoes. What does the woman mean? Number 7. My roommate Karen makes the best salads. 
I don't understand why mine never tastes as good as hers. It's not such a mystery. She's a vegetarian and has simply perfected the art. What does the man mean? Number 8. Do you think you could help me get a new couch into my apartment this weekend? Didn't you make arrangements to have it delivered? That'd be easier, and it's free. What does the man suggest the woman do? Number 9. The opening of the new photo exhibit was great. I thought you said you were coming too, to meet the artist. Oh no, that was last weekend? What can be inferred about the man? Number 10. Are you going to buy that? I'm not sure I like it on you. Well, it is comfortable. Perfect for our trip. Maybe I'd better find a mirror so I can see how it looks. What is the man doing? Number 11. Ugh, I can't figure out why I can't get my computer to print. Did you check the cables? Sometimes they just get loose. What does the woman suggest the man do? Number 12. I'm going out to the golf course this afternoon. Would you like to come along? I could use a few pointers on my game. I'd be glad to, but I'm not sure what I could show you. What does the man mean? Number 13. I think I'll take three of these tablets. My head is killing me. You'd better read the label carefully first. What does the woman imply the man should do? Number 14. I thought you weren't planning to come home for supper. Oh, but I was. What does the woman mean? Number 15. I'm really looking forward to taking up piano this semester. I hope you do better than I did when I took lessons. I just don't have an ear for music. What does the woman mean? Number 16. Did you pick up some French bread at the bakery? A sign on the window said closed. Please call again. What does the man mean? Number 17. I'm nervous about the job interview I have this afternoon. Relax. Just let them know about your background. It's perfect for the job. What does the woman suggest the man do? Number 18. I really don't see the value of these modern paintings. They look like the kind of pictures my four-year-old nephew paints. And I'll bet he uses brighter colors, too. What can be inferred about the speakers?
Number 19. Are you flying or taking the train home for the summer? Neither. Since I've got this job at the university library, my parents are just going to come visit sometime in July. What does the woman mean? Number 20. Do you have any idea when tonight's rehearsal will be over? Beats me. You could try asking Jeff. What does the man mean? Go on to the next page. Number 21. The music we were playing last night didn't disturb you, did it? I was trying to get some work done. What does the man imply about the music? Number 22. The election's tomorrow. Do you want to help me put up some more campaign posters? I don't see why we should bother. The people who are going to vote have already made up their minds. What does the man imply? Number 23. Jessie's doing well in chemistry now, isn't she? Yes, she's really come a long way. What does the man say about Jesse? Number 24. I give up. I'll never learn how to ski as well as you. Don't be discouraged. Remember, I practically grew up on skis. What does the woman imply? Number 25. Your neighbors used to grow the most wonderful peaches. You have a good memory. The tree went down in a storm a few years ago, and I'd completely forgotten about it. What does the man imply? Number 26. Jack's plan to move across the country and start his own business is really brave, but I hope he knows what he's doing. Oh, I know. I can't help but wonder how he's ever going to manage it. What does the man mean? Number 27. I hear that Professor Jones is going to be on the news tonight. Could I come over and watch it? Well, a bunch of us from class are going to go over to Dave's to watch it. Want to join us? What will the speakers probably do this evening? Number 28. I've been combing the classifieds for an apartment. I think there are some good rentals on the bulletin board outside the student center. What does the man suggest the woman do? Number 29. Look at it poor. So much for our tennis game. Yeah, and since it's supposed to keep up all night, we ought to forget about tomorrow's lunch game, too. What does the man imply? Number 30. The phone will be installed tomorrow. Oh, so you did order it. 
What had the woman assumed? This is the end of Part A. Go on to the next page. Now read along as the directions for Part B are being read. Part B Directions In this part of the test, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Go on to the next page. Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to part of an interview between a student newspaper reporter and a professor. Professor Smith, let me make sure my information is accurate. The title of your book is Moving People, the New York Subway and Urban Development. It's 312 pages long and it will be published next month. That's right. You should be sure to make clear that I'm not the sole author. My co-author is Kathleen Douglas. Oh, yes, I have that. So why write about the subways? I'm a cultural historian, and I'm interested in the impact of technology on people's lives. The subways increased everyone's mobility. How cheap, efficient transportation changed life in New York, that's really the focus. Have the subways been around a long time? Some unsuccessful attempts were made as far back as the 1870s. But the history of the subways really begins with the founding of the IRT, the Interborough Rapid Transit Company, in 1900. Today we call it the IRT. So the IRT built the first subway in 1900? They started work in 1900, but it took four years to dig the tunnel and lay the track for the first line. And it was a success? Oh, yes. People knew it would transform their lives. A hundred thousand rode the train the first day. I've got some great pictures of that day. Are they in the book? Yes, those and quite a few others. Actually, Kathleen collected the photographs. I was going over this set when you arrived. Number 31. What is the main topic of the interview? Number 32. Who is Kathleen Douglas? Number 33. What aspect of the New York subway especially interests the professor? Number 34. What will the professor probably do next? Questions 35 through 38. Listen to a conversation between two students who are members of the computer club. Sorry to say this, Pam, but I think we're going to have to cancel tonight's planning meeting. You're kidding, Tom. With a computer fair only two weeks away? Is the weather that bad? Well, I just listened to the noon forecast on the radio, and the snow's supposed to start between 2 and 3 and continue throughout the afternoon and evening. Some other campus clubs have already announced they're not meeting. Gee, I'd hate to cancel, though. There's so much to do to get ready. I know what you mean, but if the weather's bad, we probably wouldn't get much of a turnout anyway. Remember how many computer club members live far from campus? Maybe you're right. 
And Kathy told me yesterday that the publicity's all taken care of. And I've made the arrangements for the rooms we'll be using, so that's all set, too. Sounds as if we're further ahead than I thought. Maybe we could just postpone the meeting till tomorrow night. I think we'd better wait a couple of days until the road's clear. How about the day after tomorrow? I could get on the phone and let everyone know. I'll split the list with you. That way, we'll each have only ten calls to make. Great. And when I talk to Sarah, I'll find out how the response from the computer vendors has been. Last I heard, there were about twenty software companies coming. I guess everything's coming along all right then. Let's just hope we have good weather the day of the fair. Number thirty-five. What are the speakers working on? Number thirty-six. Why do the speakers decide to cancel the meeting? Number thirty-seven. Where is the planning meeting scheduled to take place? Number thirty-eight. How are the speakers going to let club members know about the change in plans? This is the end of Part B. Go on to the next page. Now read along as the directions for Part C are being read. Part C. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear several short talks. After each talk, you will hear some questions. The talks and the questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording, you hear. Listen to an instructor talk to his class about a television program. I'd like to tell you about an interesting TV program that'll be shown this coming Thursday. It'll be on from 9 to 10 p.m. on Channel 4. It's part of a series called Mysteries of Human Biology. The subject of the program is the human brain, how it functions, and how it can malfunction. Topics that will be covered are dreams, memory, and depression. These topics are illustrated with outstanding computer animation that makes the explanations easy to follow. Make an effort to see this show. Since we've been studying the nervous system in class, I know you'll find it very helpful. Now, listen to a sample question: What is the main purpose of the program? In your test book, you read a to demonstrate the latest use of computer graphics. B, to discuss the possibility of an economic depression. C, to explain the workings of the brain. D, to dramatize a famous mystery story. The best answer to the question, "What is the main purpose of the program?" is C, to explain the workings of the brain. Therefore, the correct choice is C. Now listen to another sample question. Why does the speaker recommend watching the program? In your test book, you read: A. It is required of all science majors. B. It will never be shown again. C. It can help viewers improve their memory skills. D. It will help with coursework. The best answer to the question "Why does the speaker recommend watching the program?" is D. It will help with coursework. Therefore, the correct choice is D. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. 
Go on to the next page. Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 39 through 42. Listen to a talk by an anthropologist. To continue our series of recordings from the museum's archives, this afternoon you will have the opportunity to hear a preeminent Native American storyteller, Joseph Medicine Crow. This museum is fortunate to have some of the recordings of legends and other stories he has collected from his Native Crow culture, which is one of the Plains Indian groups. To understand the significance of these recordings, it is important to remember that the history and traditions of Native Americans were not written down. Instead, they were passed down from one generation to the next by tribal storytellers. Often, these storytellers were specially trained. They were chosen for the role when young and charged with remembering and sharing their people's oral history, a tradition that no longer exists. Joseph Medicine Crow recorded and saved the stories of his grandfather, one of the Crow people's last war chiefs. He also collected the memoirs of other tribal elders. Today, the traditional tribal storytellers Joseph Crow knew as a young man are all gone, so he must now gather information from their children and grandchildren. Now we'll hear a tape of this great storyteller as he recounts a legend of the Crow people. The slides you will see accompanying this story are pictures of artifacts of various Plains Indian cultures. Number 39. What is the speaker's main purpose? Number 40. Why were storytellers important to Plains Indian cultures? Number 41. According to the talk, why are Joseph Medicine Crow's recordings especially important now? Number 42. Why does Joseph Medicine Crow collect material from storytellers' children? Questions 43 through 46. Listen to a professor in a business class. I hope you've all finished reading the assigned chapter on insurance. So that you're prepared for our discussion today. But before we start, I'd like to mention a few things your text doesn't go into. It's interesting to note that insurance has existed in some form for a very long time. The earliest insurance policies were what were called bottomry contracts. They provided shipping protection for merchants as far back as 3000 BCE. In general, the contracts were often no more than verbal agreements. They granted loans to merchants with the understanding that if a particular shipment of goods was lost at sea, the loan didn't have to be repaid. Interest on the loans varied according to how risky it was to transport the goods. During periods of heavy piracy at sea, for example, the amount of interest and the cost of the policy went up considerably. So you can see how insurance helped encourage international trade. Even the most cautious merchants became willing to risk shipping their goods over long distances, not to mention in hazardous weather conditions, when they had this kind of protection available. Generally speaking, the basic form of an insurance policy has been pretty much the same since the Middle Ages. There are four points that were salient then and remain paramount in all policies today. These were outlined in Chapter 6 and will serve as the basis for the rest of today's discussion. Can anyone tell me what one of those points might be? Number 43. What is the purpose of the professor's talk? Number 44. Who were the first insurance contracts designed to protect?
Number 45. What does the professor say determine the cost of early insurance policies? Number 46. What does the professor say about current insurance policies? Questions 47 through 50. Listen to part of a talk about honeybees. Communication. What is communication? Some of you will say it is language. But is communication just limited to human language? You might be surprised to learn that scientists have discovered that honeybees have a form of communication that is as complicated and as effective as human language. Honeybees communicate by dancing. For example, when a honeybee finds food, it returns to its hive and performs a dance. This dance communicates a message about the food. Basically, there are three types of dances, the round dance, the sickle dance, and the tail wagging dance. In all three dances, the number of turns in the bee's dance tells the other bees how far the food is from the hive. The angle of the bee's dance in relation to the sun tells the direction of food from the hive. So, you see, honeybees communicate using one form of nonverbal communication. Can anyone suggest another form of nonverbal communication used by animals? Number 47. What aspect of honeybees does the speaker discuss? Number 48. According to the speaker, what does the honeybee communicate through its dances? Number 49. What does the speaker say about the honeybee's system of communication? Number 50. What does the speaker ask the listeners to do at the end of the talk? This is the end of Section 1, Listening Comprehension. Stop work on Section 1. Turn off your audio player.